Hello guys, welcome to Viator Guide. Today we are gonna study the left turning tendencies of an airplane. The left turning tendencies are made up of four elements which produce a twisting or rotating motion around at least one of the airplane's three axes. These four elements are one torque reaction from engine and propeller, second corkscrewing effect of the slipstream. Third, gyroscopic action of the propeller, and fourth, asymmetric loading of the propeller, which is also called as P factor. Torque reaction. Torque reaction involves Newton's third law of physics. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. As applied to the aircraft, this means that as the internal engine and parts and propeller are revolving in one direction, an equal force is trying to rotate the aircraft in the opposite direction. When the aircraft is airborne, this force is acting around the longitudinal axis, tending to make the aircraft roll. To compensate for roll tendency, some of the older aircraft are rigged in a manner to create more lift on one wing that is being forced downward. The more modern aircraft are designed with the engine offset to counteract this effect of torque. Note, most United States built aircraft engines rotate the propeller clockwise as viewed from the pilot's seat. The discussion here is in with reference to those engines. Generally, the compensating forces are permanently set so that they compensate for this force at cruising speed since most of the aircraft's operating lift is at that speed. However, aileron trim tabs permit further adjustment for other speeds. When the aircraft's wheels are on the ground during the takeoff roll, an additional turning moment around the vertical axis is induced by the torque reaction. As the left side of the aircraft is being forced down by the torque reaction, more weight is being placed on the left main landing gear. This results in more ground friction or drag on the left tire than on the right, causing a further turning moment to the left. The magnitude of this moment is dependent on many variables. Some of these variables are size and horsepower of engine, size of propeller and the RPM, size of the aircraft and condition of the ground surface. This yawing moment on the takeoff rule is corrected by pilot's proper use of the rudder or rudder trim. Talking about the corkscrew effect now, the high speed rotation of an aircraft propeller gives a corkscrew or spiraling rotation to the slipstream. At high propeller speeds and low forward speed, as in the takeoffs and approaches to power on stalls, this spiraling rotation is very compact and exerts a strong sideward force on the aircraft's vertical tail surface. When this spiraling slipstream strikes the vertical fin, it causes a turning moment about the aircraft's vertical axis. The more compact the spiral, the more prominent the force is. As the forward speed increases, However, the spiral elongates and becomes less effective. The corkscrew flow of the slipstream also causes a rolling moment along the longitudinal axis. Note that this rolling moment caused by the corkscrew flow of the slipstream is to the right, while the rolling moment caused by the torque reaction is to the left. In effect, one may be counteracting the other. However, these forces vary greatly as it is the pilot's responsibility to apply proper corrective action by the use of flight controls at all times. These forces must be counteracted regardless of which is the most prominent at the time. Now talking about gyroscopic action. Before the gyroscopic effects of the propeller can be understood, it is necessary to understand the basic principle of a gyroscope. All practical applications of the gyroscope are based upon two fundamental properties of gyroscopic action, rigidity in space and precession. The one of interest for this discussion is precession. Precession is the resultant action or deflection of a spinning rotor when a deflecting force is applied to its rim. As can be seen in the figure, when a force is applied, the resulting force takes effect 90 degrees ahead of and in the direction of rotation. The rotating propeller of an airplane makes a very good gyroscope and thus has similar properties. Any time a force is applied to deflect the propeller out of its plane of rotation, the resulting force is 90 degrees ahead of and in direction of rotation and in the direction of application. 
causing a pitching moment, a yawing moment, or a combination of the two depending upon the point at which the force was applied. This element of torque effect has always been associated with and considered more prominent in the tailwheel type aircraft and most often occurs when the tail is being raised during the takeoff roll. This change in the pitch attitude has the same effect as applying a force to the top of the propeller's plane of rotation. The resultant force acting 90 degree ahead causes a yawing moment to the left around the vertical axis. The magnitude of this moment depends on several variables, one of which is the abruptness with which the tail is raised, amount of force applied. However, precession or gyroscopic action occurs when a force is applied to any point on the rim of the propeller's plane of rotation. The resultant force will still be 90 degree from the point of application in the direction of rotation. Depending on where the force is applied, the airplane is caused to yaw left or right, to pitch up or down, or a combination of pitching and yawing. It can be said that as a result of gyroscopic action, any yawing around the vertical axis results in a pitching moment and any pitching around the lateral axis results in a yawing moment. To correct for the effect of gyroscopic action, it is necessary for the pilot to properly use elevator and rudder to prevent undesired pitching and yawing. Now talking about asymmetric loading also known as P-factor. When an aircraft is flying with a high angle of attack, the bite of the downward moving blade is greater than the bite of the upward moving blade. This moves the center of thrust to the right of the prop disc area causing a yawing moment toward the left around the vertical axis. To prove this explanation is complex because it will be necessary to work wind vector problems on each blade while considering both the angle of attack of the aircraft and the angle of attack of each blade. This asymmetric loading is caused by the resultant velocity which is generated by the combination of the velocity of the propeller blade in its plane of rotation and the velocity of the air passing horizontally through the propeller disc. With the aircraft being flown at positive angle of attacks, the right viewed from the rear or the downswinging blade is passing through an area of resultant velocity which is greater than that affecting the left or up swinging blade. Since the propeller blade is an airfoil, increased velocity means increased lift. The down swimming swinging blade has more lift and tends to pull or yaw the aircraft's nose to the left. When the aircraft is flying at a high angle of attack, the downward moving blade has a higher resultant velocity, creating more lift than the upward moving blade. This might be easier to visualize if the propeller shaft is mounted perpendicular to the ground like a helicopter. If there were no air movement at all except that generated by the propeller itself, identical sections of each blade would have the same airspeed. With air moving horizontally across this vertically mounted propeller, the blade proceeding forward into the flow of air has a higher airspeed than the blade retreating with the airflow. Thus, the blade proceeding into the horizontal airflow is creating more lift or thrust, moving the center of thrust towards that blade. Visualize rotating the vertically mounted propeller shaft to the shallower angles related to the moving air as on the aircraft. This unbalanced thrust then becomes proportionately smaller and continues getting smaller until it reaches the value of zero when the propeller shaft is exactly horizontal in relation to the moving air. The effects of each of these four elements of torque vary in value with changes in flight situations. In one phase of flight, one of these elements may play a more prominent role than another. In another phase of flight, another element may be more prominent. The relationship of these values to each other varies with different aircraft depending on the airframe, engine and propeller combinations as well as other design features. To maintain positive control of the aircraft in all flight conditions, the pilot must apply the flight controls as necessary to compensate for these varying values. Thank you for watching Aviator Guide. Do subscribe for more videos.